last week was horrible. I did not have a good time, but I did do some retail therapy, so we already built another drone. And in this video, I'm gonna lay out how much I spent to actually buy the components inside this drone. If you're an FPV noob, this might interest you a lot more. And if you're not an FPV noob, I'm actually gonna fly it right now and have some fun. So before I get into that, if you're new here, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot. And drop a like while you're down there. And let's get into it. <laughs> I'm actually so scared it's stupid. If you've been in my shoes where nothing goes right, you could probably relate to that, but this is horrible. <laughs> oh my God, I'm terrified. This is technically my maiden flight. Oh my gosh, these rates are too much. Whoa. I haven't flown in like a week, so in general, my stuff just feels so weird. But I do have some wonky rates on here that I'm not used to. I have a drone in the air again. This is terrifying. I hope there's no jello in it. I kind of got some in my camera, but again, I had to finagle this thing. I never buy like frames or have frames that have the correct sizing for the cameras I'm using. Cause I just, it's the one thing when I'm purchasing components, I never pay attention to and it's really annoying. I think I'm gonna, I did, I don't know why, but I lost like all the settings I had prior, so I just found some random rates to put in. I think I have a screenshot somewhere of what I was using previously before this happened, so I'll put them in for the next video so I can kind of be back to where I was. I need to stop flying into the sun, that probably looks horrendous. This probably looks so bad, my quad's so jumpy. Because I partially can't fly. Just a little bit of a heads up, this is gonna be auto GoPro footage. Usually I don't like using auto settings, it just doesn't look as good. But my mount doesn't wanna screw in to the one on my drone, so we're gonna have to make do with this. So I hope it doesn't look horrible. But yeah, hopefully it looks good.
There it goes. We have a crash with the new drone. Let's go get it. I can see from here that my battery ejected, which is whatever. Um, what's not whatever is that it probably went right into my GoPro. Huh. GoPro looks okay. GoPro, you good, bro? Yeah, we're good. Uh, so Vanover said he was sending me a frame and this was one of the features that it would help with is the fact that, ooh, that's toasty. Um, it would help with ejecting of the, the battery. So that's interesting. This has been a while since that has happened, but first crash out of the way, I'm feeling good. So I'm gonna run through this fairly quickly. So I apologize if it seems rushed and it's also not gonna include things such as my radio or my goggles or even the link. This is all separate from what I'm talking about. I'm talking about just the quad today and the components that go inside of it. So it has nothing to do with the goggles or the radio, just the quad. I will also mention I didn't pay for every single component in this drone. Some of the things were sent to me by companies that I'm partnered with. I just thought I'd be a little bit transparent about that. Let's get into it. So starting off, I knew I needed a DJI system of some sort. So I went with the Vista and the Vista cost me $139.99. Moving on to the frame. I did not pay for this frame. I'm partnered with Rotor Lab, so they did send me this out so I could make some marketing content for them. If I would have bought it, it would have cost me $59.99. Moving on from there, I do use Crossfire, so I use a Nano RX, and that cost me $34.95. From there, I moved to Fettech earlier this year, so I have a G4N, and that cost me $69.99. I have an ESC from Fettech as well, the 45 amp foreign one, and that cost me $89.99. Everyone says you need a spike absorber to run the Fettech stuff, so I got one whether I needed it or not, and it cost me $7.99. I also didn't want to reuse any of the battery leads that I had because they're all kind of torn apart and I know I could buy everything separate and like kind of solder it all up myself but I skipped that and I just bought a pigtail and it cost me $3.49. From there, my motors, I also did not pay for these but if I would have, it would have cost me $110, $110. I choose Umagrip for my battery pads and the Umagrip would have cost me $4.99. All together, the insides of this drone cost me $521.38, which is kind of pricey. It's really pricey for the average Joe. Like, I don't know what other drones cost because I never really did the math on them. I would just kind of yeet my money into it. However, I feel like this is more on the pricey side of a drone and I bet you could do things in a more budget friendly way. This is just the route I went and if I mess this one up, I guarantee I will be looking for a budget friendly alternative to what I have going on here. But that's how much it cost me to piece together this drone. Um, I did not mention anything like the 3D parts because it's not necessary to have them. However, I do use Brain 3D 90% of the time for my 3D prints, unless the manufacturers from the frames provide these. That is the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm so happy I'm back in the air and I'm so very grateful that so many of you had such nice things to say on my last video. If you made it to this part in the video, you guys have no idea how much I actually appreciated that. I was in a very like not great spot after I had posted that because I was having such a bad week and you guys honestly came in clutch with the comments and the likes and just supporting me more so as a person than like an FPV pilot online. So I, from the bottom of my heart, really do appreciate that. That means the world to me. And yeah, I just wanted to mention that, but thank you guys so much for watching this video. Again, if you enjoyed it, drop a like, subscribe if you're new, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Adios, happy flying.